All right, day 18. This is the last day in this demo series, and I cannot tell you how excited I am to be out of this phase. It's always really exciting to finally get to a point where I can actually renovate a camper, and I am almost there in this trailer. I have this front section right here that I need to repair, and then I have the floor in the back. Um, I actually didn't get to the floor in the back today, um, but I won't video that for you guys because it's basically the same process as I did up front, so it's nothing you haven't already seen. So to start off today, um, if you see I have my multi-tool with a scraper blade on it, I'm basically just scraping off all of the extra gunk and sealant um, and basically construction adhesive that's on these aluminum studs right there. So I want to get this as clean as possible, take out any um, nails or anything like that. I'm cleaning up the edges right here with my multi-tool with a different type of blade. Um, and then uh, now that that's all clean, I'm going to move over to this wall and I'm going to start here first. So I kind of contemplated what I wanted to do with this wall, um, because really the only damage was that the wallpaper was peeling off, but then there was a little bit of damage at the bottom. So I just decided that I would take the whole panel off and replace the whole panel. I know y'all were looking to, um, basically know how to replace wall panels in this camper anyway. So I'm just going to bite the bullet and go ahead and do it. So to start off, I basically scraped all of this old paneling off. Um, and there's two pieces of, it's like metal flashing that run along the inside of the wall. And that's basically where the bed goes. It's, it's like a backer for the wall. It's really hard to get this stuff off the wall. So I'm just using my multi-tool to kind of scrape it all off of that. Um, and this was a really long and tedious process, but once I got past that point, it actually came up fairly easily and in pretty solid chunks. Um, so that was really surprising because all the other walls I've done with foam like this, it is a painstaking process to scrape the paneling off of it and usually end up damaging it in the process. And I don't like that because I want a flat surface to adhere the new panel to. Um, but this one actually worked out really good. So if you see, I kind of stuck my multi-tool under it and then kind of pulled out. Um, and it did come off in fairly big chunks. This small section must have just been glued extremely well. Um, but I did end up getting it all off and nice and clean. So that was a nice little surprise for the day. And um, I didn't have to spend a million hours trying to get this one little section of wall clean. Next, I'm going to cut this panel, um, and you see it's in the front, and it's kind of a weird shape. Um, so you know me, I like to draw things out, I like to come up with a plan, I like to take measurements. So I measure the top um, all the way to the bottom, so basically the width, the height, and then where my um, pivot point is. Basically this curve, there's a point where it kind of stops right above the um, little door right there, and then it kind of comes down a little bit. So that is what my drawing ended up looking like. Um, and then I just can bring my piece of wood over. I'm using true quarter inch plywood right here um, instead of that H eighth inch MDF. And that's only because I don't have any seams I'm going to have to match up here. So I can pretty much use whatever paneling I want. And I like this because it's thicker. And if it ever does get wet again, it's not going to rot the inside of the wall as quickly as it would have if I use that MDF. So I'm going to start cutting my panel um, lengthwise first, and I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger than what I actually need. Um, if you want like a full video on how I cut these like weird angles and stuff, um, I do have a video on my channel on how to do that. Um, but I'll kind of just run through the basics of it right here. And I actually did it differently this way, and I like this way a whole lot better than the method that I used in the last video. But you live and you learn, so... So I'm actually going to leave this a full four feet in width um, because <laughs> there was a little piece at the bottom that I wanted to cut all in one piece, but then I accidentally cut through that piece when I was cutting it. So it was great in theory, but my brain just wasn't working. Um, and you'll see that in the video once I go to put this in. So I'm basically going to rough cut this thing. I'm not going to bother um, cutting that curve, first of all. Um, I'm just going to measure and cut a straight line down. Um, and I need that straight line because I need to be able to scoot this panel in enough to where I can get something um, to basically scribe out this corner right here. 
So because I am OCD and probably slightly ADHD as well, um, I like my um, corners right here to be perfect. I don't want to have to guess if this angle is going to be right. So if you see I left it big, I scooted up against the wall, I got a block of wood, and I basically just ran it all down that wall. That way I know for sure that this is the right um, curvature of this, the angles are right, um, and I don't want to have to just second guess whether or not this is going to be right and it's just gonna take too much time. So, um, I did that and then I basically just went and I cut it out. I have a little jigsaw right here. Um, just works easier when you're cutting kind of curvatures like that. Um, so after I cut it off, I went and I test fit it and I am happy with it, which is great. So the next step for me is I'm going to cut it so it'll fit directly beside the panel that's already there. So I make a line at the top and then I go and I make a line down at the bottom so I know exactly where it is just in case my angle is off just a little bit. Um, and then I can go back outside and cut that whole thing all the way down. Um, and you see I pulled it out right there. It's because I couldn't see where the line was on the bottom. So I marked it on the floor. So that's just a little trick. If you can't find it up behind the wall, mark it on the floor. Works great every time. So using my saw guide and a circular saw, I just run it through. Um, cut this panel where it needs to be cut. And then I actually took it back in for another test fit. Actually, no, I didn't. I lied. So I took this little um, pass through out because... Um, I want to be able to router out this hole because I'm not going to second guess where this is. So it's a lot easier for me to just take this out. Um, it's just a couple screws and then the whole thing pops out. And then um, when the time comes, I can router out that hole perfectly and don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to have a clean edge on this thing or not. I also didn't realize there was a little hole for one of the lights, um, the electrical coming out, so I drilled that hole. Um, now I am putting down adhesive, so I'm using something different. This is a Gorilla Glue um, contact cement spray. It's like ultimate, and I have been fussed at by some of you in the past for not putting it on both sides, so I won't make that mistake again. So I will put it on the wall, and then I will put it on the panel, and I will have to say the adhesion is a whole lot better. I didn't have to sit there and like hold it. It pretty much stuck the first time I put it up there and um, I didn't have to worry about it. So thanks for that suggestion. Um, I always appreciate feedback from you guys because, you know, I don't think we're ever know enough about anything to not learn something from other people. So after this is nice and lined up, I go ahead and grab my nailer and run a few nails in the aluminum frame. Um, this is a um, 16 gauge nailer that I have with one inch nails in it. Um, don't try to use an 18 gauge on aluminum frame. It won't work and you'll bust your gun up. So you need something a little bit heavier duty. Um, and right here, I'm routering out the little pass through. Um, and as you can see, the router won't go all the way to the bottom. So my fix for this is I go on the outside, I get my multi-tool and I just use that aluminum frame as a guide um, and just cut the rest of this little piece out and it comes out perfectly every time. Now lastly for a wall, you have this seam right here that looks kind of ugly. Um, so you can, a lot of people put like strips of like trim right here, but I like it to be flush. So what this is, it is, um, I like to use the melamine one, but this one's actually birch because I ran out of the melamine. Um, but this is edge banding. It is iron on edge banding and that is just a house iron. Um, and I have it in my shop because do I look like the type of person who irons clothes? No, I don't. So it's out in my shop um, and you can buy this stuff in a whole roll and just iron it on the wall and it looks great. So this is me just messing with the electrical. I'm trying to figure out what I need to clip to be able to get this electrical through the wall and make sure that I won't clip anything um, when I'm putting the new bottom panel in. Um, so as you can see, I clipped that, fed it back through the wall so I can feed it in. Um, the other one was a light that I clipped and I unbundled it and you'll see me put all that back in later. Again, y'all know I like to draw things out. So I'm drawing it out right here. I'm drawing out the electrical as well. And this is me measuring where I need to cut the holes for the electrical to come in. Now here's my little drawing for this. Very simple um, width, height, and then basically I mapped out the electrical and how far I want it from each edge. 
Um, now this is my first piece. I actually had this scrap piece, which is why I'm doing a small section for the bottom. This is going to go straight up and down. There's going to be no curvature to this, which is totally fine because that's actually how this was built in the first place. Um, so it worked out great that I had this scrap piece of wood that was fit almost perfectly. Um, so this is me drilling my holes for the electrical and then I can go install this in the keeper. So a couple things for this, um, I did test fit it um, just to make sure that it fit in the right place and my electrical was going to go in the right place. Um, I didn't really put any um, liquid nails on this because it's on the bottom and there's really only two contact points to begin with and there's not going to be any curvature or pressure on it. So I only had enough liquid nails to do the top part. So that's really the main reason why I didn't do that. But you're more than welcome to put liquid nails on this if it's going to make you feel better. Um, so this is just me feeding that electrical through the wall panel. So you see some I feed out and some I feed in. Um, so what I'm messing with right now is a light um, on the outside right there. And I had to clip those wires. But because I clipped them, I need the walls, the wires to be inside the wall. So I'm stripping the wires and I'm reconnecting them. Now I use um, crimp caps for these. People come at me all the time saying that I should use the Wago nuts and all these other things. But honestly, the Wago nuts, I don't like them because they can actually flip out underneath the wall if for whatever reason something hits it when it's shifting. There's just, there's, there's a lot of reasons. I don't like it. But y'all don't believe me for it. I just saw... Um, I think it's that repair guy on TikTok or that RV repair guy on TikTok do a video about those. So y'all can go watch him and believe him. Anyway, crimp nuts good. That's where I'm going at. Um, so after that, I basically uh, just nail it in. Same as the other side. Um, I am making sure to get the framing on this and don't just shoot it in because this is a heavy duty nailer and it might shoot all the way through your front cap and you don't want that. So be careful where you put your nails. All right, so this is my drawing for the second piece I'm gonna put up, same thing. Um, super easy, just cut it to 93, and this is a little bit shorter than four feet. That way I can hit that framing that's already pre-existing in this trailer. Um, and this is just me kind of figuring out that electrical situation as well. So there's two outlets on each side, and I ended up um, just clipping the wires at the outlets like that. Um, and I'll probably end up replacing those outlets anyway, so I'm not really too worried about getting the wires out. Um, so after that, I'm getting lots of liquid nails, and I'm putting them on all of these little framing parts right here. So because I'm going to try to make this curve right here, um, I actually set this panel out in the sun to kind of let it warm up and bake a little bit because it bends easier when it's warm. So right here, I'm securing the wire that's up top for the lights because I don't want to pinch it when I put this panel in. Um, so definitely check all your wires before you think about putting panels in because you don't want to overlap the panel on top of the wires um, because that will create electrical issues for you. So make sure they're tucked nicely in those um, framing pieces. So now it's time to put this panel up and I'm kind of um, scooching it up a little bit, a little bit at a time and pulling these wires out. Um, I don't want to put too much stress on these wires, but I also don't want to leave any of this wire behind the wall in case it pinches um, on top of the framing. So after I've got it in place, I get my 16 gauge nailer and I just start going at it. So on the corners right here, you can see I'm using my body weight to kind of put my shoulder in the side of the panel and then put nails all the way up that arch. Um, so that's really the best way to do it for this because if you just hold it right there and put the nails in, then it's not going to pull that panel into that arch like you want it to. So now that that panel's in, I'm going to move on to the last one. I'm going to trim this um, roof membrane right here so it's not just hanging down in my way. Um, not all the way, obviously, but just enough to get it out of my way. And then I'm going to start with the liquid nails. Um, so this really only has three spots of framing, and then there's one up in the ceiling that I'm going to try to tack onto as well. Now this section is by far the hardest one because um, just of how much curvature it is, um, it's really hard to get this quarter inch plywood to bend that much. And I mean like really, really hard. Um, and you can make relief cuts in it, but at the same time, the relief cuts don't really work that well in the quarter inch plywood. Um, I've, I have found that it just tries to crack it versus actually bending. The relief cuts really only work when you're using that MDF stuff, um, like the eighth, eighth inch paneling. But I'm just basically pushing it in as much as I can, 
using my body weight to get that curve all the way up. And then I'm trying to get this one um, stud that's right there that I know is there um, and tack it in. And here's this mess in the bathroom that I have to fix. As you can see, it's a really small area. Um, so hopefully it won't take me that long to finish that. But the good news is, is our friends that were living over here in my little cabinet have all flown the nest. Um, so I feel perfectly safe and fine. Go ahead and closing up this floor. Mama is gone and so are the babies. So I'm guessing they just flew away and are living happily ever after is, is what I would like to think. And that's a big old nest right there. Um, anyway, I'm excited for this uh, renovation series and I hope y'all have enjoyed this and have a great rest of your night.